The place to be in Washington, D.C. this evening is the MCI Center, where tonight Big East basketball is on tap. Rutgers meeting Georgetown. Welcome everybody to our nation's capital Washington DC this is Big East basketball this evening it's the Scarlet Knights coming down from New Jersey to take on the Georgetown Hoyt. Hi again everybody I'm Dave Sims along with Bob Wenzel these two teams are struggling in conference play but it's still early let's talk about Rutgers first Ricky Shields easily their most consistent guy can he get off tonight well he must get off tonight he 14 points a game he shoots 44 percent from the field and 44 percent from three-point range he is a versatile guy on offense they need for him to step up against the Hoyas tonight Meanwhile, for the Georgetown Hoyas, you can almost begin any and all discussions with two words, Mike Sweetney. <laughs> no does question. It all. First team all Big East and all American. He's known for his offense, but he also steals the ball very well, and he has 37 blocks on the season. Rutgers defensive game plan centers around Mike Sweetney. In their game against St. John's, normal numbers for Sweetney. Brandon Bowman, the freshman, stepped up, and he needs to continue to do so. For Rutgers to get its first win in conference play, they're going to need somebody else to make himself known. Inside it could be number one, Herve Lamazana. We'll find out what he can do along with the Scarlet Knights. Coming up next when we tip it off here in Washington, D.C. Good look at the U.S. Capitol on this bright and cold night on the East Coast. Here in Washington, D.C., Dave Sims and Bob Wenzel with you as we check out the lineups tonight. Sean Xani getting the start in the middle. And the thing to look for from this Rutgers ball club, they'll put a lot of pressure, a lot of full court pressure on Georgetown tonight. Sweetney up front is the guy you got to look for, but Wilson, they're still waiting for him to emerge as a double-double kind of guy in the post. Bethel and Riley will be in the backcourt. And Bowman, we mentioned him earlier, he's off to a pretty good start. Well, he is, and Sweetney, of course, is the guy, the main person for Georgetown. He needs to be dealt with from a defensive standpoint. Both teams held serve at home last year. Last time Rutgers had a victory in Washington, D.C. You have to go back to December 8th of 98, 68 to 62. There's Gary Waters, head coach of the Scarlet Knights. Coach of the Year in the New York metropolitan area last year in the U.S. Basketball Writers District 2 Coach of the Year. Craig Eshrick, a Georgetown lifer. There he is right in the middle. He just his head flopping up right between us. That part shooters. that has no hair on it. There you go. You tell him. <laughs> Class of 78 here at Georgetown, 46 years old in his fifth season, having taken over for the Hall of Famer John Thompson. Club at 9-4, and 1-2 and two in the Big East. Rutgers 0-3 in the Big East with losses to Pittsburgh, Notre Dame, and Villanova. And Georgetown, they've struggled. Heck, the win, the win they do have in conference play, they had to beat West Virginia here at home in OT by two points. And both teams, Dave, coming off bad losses. Georgetown was way ahead of St. John's late in the game and lost that game. Rutgers was blown out uncharacteristically, allowed Villanova to score 110 last time, and they hold people to 62. So a lot of team meetings <laughs> since Saturday with both of these teams, <laughs> to say the least. Good officiating crew tonight. Jim Burr, Ed Corbett, John Clackety. Georgetown on the attack first. Here's Bethel. They go right to the main man, Sweetney, against Xanny. We no only inside. Team. Put it up, blocked by Lamazano. We talked about that in the open. Got a block shot. Riley can hit it. Wilson kept it alive. New life for the Hoyas. Here's Bowman. Nice shake. Bowman, tough shot. Far side. And another opportunity for the Hoyas. Sweetening. And back out top to Tony Bethel. Bethel takes it right in. And a rare time you'll see Sweetney not make a catch inside. Coleman pulls from deep. Rebound Bowman. And a foul on the play, and they get Lamazana. That'll be his first. Dave, this is trouble. In the last game, Lamazana had two fouls in the first 30 seconds against Villanova, and they are not deep in the front court, so that's a problem. Agzani for Gary Waters will guard Sweetney. He needs to get some help. The first possession, they did not double. Wilson up top. Here's Riley, guarded by Coleman. Riley, an experienced player there, chief perimeter scorer. Bowman's the freshman, put it up off the glass and in. Nice drive by Brandon Bowman out of Santa Monica, California. 
Westchester High School. They were number one USA last year. And Ashante Cook came here to, to Georgetown. But Georgetown put on some pressure. Shields over the top. Long rebound, La Mazzana. New clock. So far, Rutgers taking two three-point shots. Nothing inside. Now an opportunity. Zanny, a face-up jumper. Lefty rebounds at Sweetney. What a snatch that one. Uh -oh. Did got you three. hear it? Yeah, he's got three <laughs> boards already. He had 19 rebounds in that game you mentioned against West Virginia and 35 points. And charged by the big man Wilson. Well, you talked to Wesley Wilson about him having to establish himself in the in the post. He's been hot and cold in his career in terms of offense, but a mainstay at the defensive end. Three-quarter court pressure on the part of Georgetown. Here's Shields coming off a good game against Noble 20. Sherrod trying to get him going offensively. He's shooting 33%. Sherrod. That'll stay right here. Rutgers ball with 22 on the clock. Good thing about Sherrod. Dave is that he's got 63 assists and only 25 turnovers. His numbers much better this year fabulous. than they were last year. But he does not score, so in the half court like this, it's five against four. Coleman's fearless, misses that one. Here's Shields again, pump fake. In traffic, won't go. Zanny gets a rebound. Back to Shields. Back to Sherrod. Shields and Coleman content to shoot from the perimeter right now. They're being challenged. Shields finally gets one. Ooh. Shooting 45%, 14 points a game. Sophomore out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland, not too far from here. 45% from three-point range is a very good number. Anything above 40 is terrific. Lamazana playing behind Wilson. He has no respect for his offensive game. Blocked second one tonight by Lamazana. Exani and Sweetney, good battle there. A couple of strong young men. Sweetney goes at 260. Alexander goes at 235. Rutgers uh, can hang their hat on those two numbers. Absolutely, a plus six in turnover margin. That's first in the league, and they do steal the ball a lot. Their problem so far this year is on their steals. They have not converted those fast break opportunities to any good degree. Mike Sweeney just picked up his first foul. He'll sit. Craig Eschrick in that John Thompson tradition. Boy, he'll shuttle people in and out faster than uh, <laughs> the Capitals do when they play hockey. In <laughs> Hard for you to keep track. Samnick is the guy in the front line who comes in, gets the most minutes for Sweetney or Wilson. Nice job, Sherrod. Split the defense, set up shields. Three ball, in and out. Keep it alive. And finally, Samnick, now he loses it for shields. Cross court, Coleman sets for three. Can't get it. Riley with a rebound. So far, Rutgers content to shoot from the perimeter. Ooh, they get a hand check on Coleman. So Coleman picks up his first. Well, right here, Rutgers likes to get into you defensively, and Coleman hands all over Riley on that particular play. Rutgers one of six from three-point range so far. Riley drives baseline under duress. Nice rebound, Shields. Head of the pack, Coleman running hard. What a catch. Goes for the reverse. Boy, that's a high degree of difficulty shot by Coleman on the pass and the delivery. Wow. Gannon to Rice. Woo. Looked a little bit like that. Yeah. I'm sorry that your Philadelphia Eagles lost yesterday. I know. I, I should be wearing more black. <laughs> <laughs> An official morning day. <laughs> 16 15 left. First half just underway. Bethel pump fake. No. How about Lamazana active on the board? Jervé going up to get that one. He's averaging just under seven boards a game. He's very good at the defensive end rebounding. Not a great offensive rebounder. Both of these teams have emotional things to deal with after the losses that they experienced last and on last Saturday. So far, pathetic from the field, both of them. Rutgers is last in field goal shooting. They try Georgetown to make, is eighth. Yeah, they try to make up with it with strong defense, but Rutgers 39% from the field this year so far. That's not very good. That's not going to get many wins. I believe they got Exani for a foul, our first timeout. That was Sean's first timeout with the Hoyas trailing Rutgers by three. <laughs> Rutgers with an early lead here at the MCI Center in Washington, D.C. And right now, let's take a look at the ConAgra Foods Big East standings in the East Division, those young Villanova Wildcats. Jay Wright has them going. And uh, Connecticut, of course, going down to Chapel Hill and losing down there. But Connecticut ranked eighth in the country. 
Georgetown and Rutgers trying to get moving here in the West Division. Pittsburgh ranked number two in the nation with Duke's loss to Maryland. Calvin Wooten in the game right now to give some offensive spark. Georgetown is doing a bad job of getting the ball to Mike Sweetney. He should touch it every possession. Sweetney's they are not double teaming him. Way too quick. Oh, nothing. They let him play. Sweetney got it back. Sweetney put it up and in. Boy, he's tough. Oh, Co-captain of the Hoyas battling his way for a deuce there. Well, Craig Eschrick two weeks ago got very verbal in his complaints about Sweetney not being fouled. He feels like he's getting hacked an awful lot, so he complained a great deal about that. Only one field goal in the first four minutes. They need to go to the horse more often. Jewel Wiggins in the game number 13. He's got the ball. Wooten, we mentioned him, and Kareem Wright, number 55. Kareem Wright played well against Pittsburgh and Notre Dame. 13 and 11 points, Dave, and he's been sort of a non-entity in his career as far as scoring, and he's a big physical body. They need him against Craig Eschrick's team tonight. He's down to 270, and got a <laughs> lot of confidence. <laughs> Got a lot of confidence offensively. We saw him against Pittsburgh, and he likes that, that right uh, part of the lane. And pretty aggressive going to the hole. Here's Wooten, a terrific score in Detroit. Back rim that one, Riley rebounds. Wooten hasn't done much this season until the last Look game. He had that 20 catch. Oh, oh, man. Big guys aren't supposed to be able to make catches like that. Hands and maintains his balance. Wide body, big strong legs, keeps him on balance. I'm gonna look up when they play Boston College because Craig Smith, it's almost like a clone. I'll tell you what, he is a very impressive young freshman. Frame right, wheeling, right hand, no. Rebound, Sweetney had it, lost it. Irving, ooh, man, he's all over. Cortland Freeman hitting the uh, deck rather hard. Georgetown switched his own last position back to man to man. Lamazana likes it facing. Oh, yeah, he can shoot it from there. Freeman cut him off and it went out of bounds on Courtney. When Mike Sweetney catches the ball close to the basket, he's virtually unstoppable. A lot of bodies. That might have been a foul early. Kareem Wright trying to get physical, but notice the recovery, how low he gets to the floor. When you're 6'8 and you get that low, that's doing some work. Amazana was long. Bowman had the rebound and gave it up. Shields, good call by Jim Burr. Tie up, and Arrow is going to give the ball to Georgetown. Say one thing, these two clubs may not be playing pretty, but they do play hard. <laughs> they play hard, but you gotta play good. And right there, Shields driving right into a wall of white jerseys. Nothing there. Well, keeping track of the missed shots, Bob Winter. That's gonna be a, we need a computer for that. Riley back rim, Wigan rebounds. Rutgers 13th in scoring. This is all games now, and Georgetown second to UConn. Well, I'll tell you what, Georgetown in their Big East games, only 70 in the game. So a big difference once they got into conference play. They have played a tough schedule this year, going to Duke and to Virginia. Lost both those games in breaking contest. character. Yes, they, they don't normally do that. Inside the rim right. Oh, that's off of, it did, it went off of Sweden. Well, we that got some big bodies in there right now with those two. Kareem Wright and Mike Sweetney. There's Tony Bethel coming back in, the numbers. Ooh, Ooh, get yeah, that off that's, there. That's about all you can say to that one. <laughs> Keep trying. Mama's on a back rim. Kareem Wright, jump ball again. He's gonna get a lucky Bethel tie up with uh, Wright. Well, sometimes, Dave, when there are weak numbers in terms of field goal shooting, the defense is intense. And yes. I think that's part of the story with both of these two teams. They want to be aggressive after having disappointing losses coming in here. And I think we're seeing a little bit of that in this game. Wide open, Bethel. First shot for the night for him. No, Wigan. Numbers against him. Oh, Took it deep and knocked out of bounds by retreating. Good re retreat by Georgetown. The Absolutely. Nice. They got back. A lot of NBA teams don't do that. Freeman really hustled. <laughs> we don't have enough fingers, right? <laughs> That's right. Rutgers had the break, but white jerseys coming back in mass. Good recovery in court and Freeman. Almost seven minutes in. Wigan inside. Wow, he got it in there. Tough, tough hard nose. He's known for his defense, but taking the ball to the basket strong that time. Career high 14 in that blowout loss to Villanova on Saturday night. Now they get a foul against Rutgers. Ricky Shields picks up the foul as first. 
Rutgers since the time of the 110 points given up to Villanova as Jerome Coleman comes back in. They practiced two and a half hours, came here, had a team meeting for two and a half hours, and practiced two hours today, day of game. Gary Waters has always been a guy that a stickler for defense. That must have, I bet he stayed up for 48 hours. Oh, I'm telling you, that had to bother him. One of those games, really an aberration, not characteristic of their squad at all. Going over ball club, just you big easy watchers. Not bad in terms of their youth. Watch them be interesting watching them mature. Amazonic bangs one home from three, 12 and a half minute mark to make it 10-6 Rutgers. Dave Lamazana is comfortable facing the basket. He likes it better. He's capable inside, but he likes it facing. As Sweetie likes his back to the basket. But Rutgers, four guys on the boards. Lamazana takes it down. Hervé averaging on just under seven a game. When you are the visitor, to get off to a good start in the first eight or ten minutes of the game is extremely important for confidence. Wigan got in traffic. Look out. And again, good. Very good officiating crew, so oh. <laughs> and nip it right in the fun. <laughs> Get it over with so nothing gets out of hand here. Upcoming games for Rutgers on Super Bowl Sunday. On Super Bowl Sunday, they're playing at West Virginia. Whoa. They'll be on the road. And West Virginia, surprisingly good. And Syracuse and Seton Hall after that. John Beeline is an outstanding coach. They had a 16-point lead yesterday on the road at BC before giving it up. But uh, they and showed they, some pretty good signs there that they, they're going to be dangerous. Oh, they beat Miami, took them apart in West Virginia. Kevin Pitts Nagel, a 6'10 freshman, doing big things. shooter, yeah. Riley in a hurry. And he got Brad going up. Look out. Well, Riley is the second option on this team, and he is a very good scorer. He's a junior, 6'6. He needs to get involved a little bit more for the Hoyas. Graham Wright picked up the foul. Mike Sweetney and the Hoyas down four to Gary Waters. Rector Scarlet Knights back with more in a moment. Four-point lead for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights who are trying to end a four-game losing streak. And let's tell you about some more Big East basketball coming your way this Saturday. We'll get another look at Mike Sweetney and Georgetown taking on number two Pittsburgh, Brandon Knight. That's Georgetown versus Pittsburgh, Saturday, January 25th at noon Eastern from ESPN+. Plus. Dave Sims, Bob Wendell will be out there for that game. Craig Eshrick has seen his big men. Get off to a two for four start doing his job, but the rest of the fellas just watching. Six points. Georgetown has scored in nine minutes. Got to give a little credit to the swarming defense of the Scarlet Knights. Let them play. That must have been a heck of a blow to knock Green right down. Sweetney with another bucket. 10 8 Rutgers. So far, Rutgers has missed 14 shots, but they've got eight offensive rebounds, so that attests to their desire at least. Rutgers averaging 13 offensive rebounds. They turn it over there. Calvin Wooten. Some giving strict. an explanation from uh, Ed Corbett. Gary Waters. That's what we just mentioned. Oof. But you know, when you, you, you're missing shots, at least if you go into the offensive board, it shows that you're getting into it emotionally. Sweetney had it taken away from Coleman. Sweetney got it back. Coleman gets the board. I'll tell you a lot, a lot of Scarlet Knights around Sweetney when he touches the basketball on that. It would appear that, that that's uh, the fruits of these extended practices. Nice steal by Bethel. Clean, too. Bethel going in, lays it up and scores. He beat McCoy on the defensive end there. You know, one of the other things about Georgetown is that they have had to replace a point guard that started and played for four years in Kevin Braswell. And when Georgetown had to do something like that, a little bit of adjustment period going on. Bethel, really a two guard, makes a nice steal, protects the ball from the defense, keeping it on his right, so no chance for a block shot. He's more of a two guard, but playing point with Riley in the game. When Drew Hall comes in, he moves over to the two. So I think they are a little bit struggling with the point guard position. Here's McCoy, they beat the press. Foul line jumper, misses that one. Owens with the rebound. Darrell Owens out of Napoleonville, Louisiana. He got knocked out of bounds. Keep it right here. There's Jason McCoy out of Houston, Texas. Well, Owens takes the ball into the basket, but McCoy, long arm, ready and waiting. 
A lot of standing around on the part of the Hoyas in the five-on-five -five situations. Not a lot of ball movement. Good help there. Kareem Wright came over. Oh, boy. Big Wesley Wilson hammers one down. He's out of Vallejo, California. Hoyas take the lead. His first bucket. The scrambling defense here. Really making a difference. Georgetown knows where to, to get it done. Wigan takes it all the way in. Look out. Courageous, to say the least. <laughs> Joel Wigan out of Columbus High School in the Bronx, New York. Well, Wesley Wilson at the offensive end trying to take the ball strong inside and did. Had nine points against St. John's, but one point, I mean four points against Seton Hall in that loss. That foul was on Darrell Owens, his second. Joel Wigan had a career-high 14 points against Villanova Saturday night. He shot six of 11. Rutgers was down about 32 points. And at that point, Gary Waters said, you know what? Let's get somebody else in here. <laughs> and the fellas that came off the bench really worked hard. They knocked that lead down to about uh, six points at one, about eight points at one late stage in the game. It's one of those games that Gary Waters wants to forget about. Aggressive play, taking the ball to the basket, which is what you want. The Hoyas converge. A lot of bodies on the floor. Good aggressive action. First trip to the free throw line by anybody, by uh, the Scarlet Knights, but by Wigan. Rutgers on the season is 12th in the conference at 63.9%, and that's one of those inadvertent uh, horns there, I believe. But well, a good thing about that with the players is when the horn happens like that, they should continue playing. Sure. Players need to understand a buzzer or a horn means nothing to them. So they the play the whistle, yes. and that's what their players did. There was somebody being ready to be substituted for, and on a missed free throw, you could not substitute. Rutgers player at the bench, ready right. to come in. You're good on the make. He can come in on exactly. the make. On the make, but on the miss, you cannot. So Shields, trying to come back in the game, will not be able to enter until after the clock starts. Georgetown ball at full court. Bowman, Bethel, Riley, Sweetney, and Wilson on the floor right now for Georgetown. Wigan, Coleman, Sherrod, Exani, and Lamazana for Rutgers. Full court pressure on the part of Rutgers. Blocking foul, Lamazana. That's not a good sign. Two on Lamazana. Decision time for Gary Waters. With two, he may need to take Lamazana out of the game. Here's what Georgetown faces. Number two, Pittsburgh, up next Saturday. Ooh. And then uh, Seton Hall will be here the following Wednesday, and then they go to number 12, Notre Dame, on February 1st. Georgetown played Notre Dame last year. First. Georgetown played Notre Dame last year. Quadruple overtime, and Pittsburgh ranked number two in the country. And Dave, they have nobody in the top 20 in scoring in the league. That's right. They are a balanced offensive team, and they are physically tough defensively. They go deep. Ontario Lett, Brandon Knight, Julius Page. Ooh. By Wesley Wilson. Fans here. Georgetown loves seeing that. Big fella makes it a 14 11 game. The thing about Pittsburgh, too, they're not eye candy. All they do is they just strangle you on defense. <laughs> and then they take they take it down uh, to the last four or five seconds to get a layup. Uh, they get the shot they want. They read the defense and react accordingly. Very, very smart team. Brandon Knight at the controls of the number two ranked team in the country. Holman's got it. Lamazana still in the game. Gary Waters decides to go with him with two fouls. Shot clock at four. Three, two. Here's a heave. And a miss. Here comes the Hoyas. They get it inside. Oh, he wedged him off. Got away with it. It's sweetening. Put up again. Score the goal. Do you think the Craig Escherick tirade benefited Georgetown right there? I think Watch so. Watch this. Leveraged him off big time. He hooked him. Well, what happens is he stayed with it. And that is the most important thing for a big man inside. Second and third effort by Craig Escherick's big man. That was That's one of what the he great, likes to see. It's one of the great tirades in recent vintage, too. Well, I'll tell I happened to see the game at Duke. And there was, I know, the West Virginia game prior to that. Craig did have a real good case to play. Well, when you have a big man who's getting hacked all the time, you want him taken care of. You've got to protect your own guys. 
Glad you could join us for Big East basketball. Spirited contest here, Rutgers and Georgetown. Dave Sims and Bob Wenzel with you. Rutgers having a hard time dealing from the outside. Four out of 19. Georgetown slightly better. They turn it over here. Well, Georgetown only scored six points in the first nine minutes, and they've scored 11 in the last three, so things getting better for the Hoyas as the game progresses. Ronnie Thompson adding to the coaching points being made on the sideline. 2-3 zone this time for the Hoyas. Good thing about this for them, they are long. They take away passing lanes, and they keep sweeping it close to the basket for rebounding. Coleman up top, he's shooting one for four today, and he got hand-checked. And that's going to be team foul number six against the Hoyas. Riley picks up the foul. Well, Craig Eshel likes to change defenses, Dave, and he doesn't like to see touch fouls like that being called. Coleman, a difficult player this year for Rutgers. Came in last year, his first year, junior college, lit things up, was their primary scorer. This year only shooting 28% from three-point range, and he amazing? shoots frequently from there. Yes, he does. And that's part of the problem. Well, he takes... 16 shots a game, nine of those are from three. And he makes almost six a game field goals and just under three from deep. Yeah. That's a lot of chucking. Ed Corbett checking who the foul was on to make sure that he's taken. It's, it's the sixth foul and not the seventh foul, so there will be no one and one in this situation. Good officiating by Mr. Corbett. Watch how Georgetown doesn't guard the inbounder. You could throw it right off the guy's back, catch it, and get a layup. Their recovery's pretty good. But you're right. <laughs> that may be good for about once, once a month, though. But you're Double right. It was available. It right. was available. Yeah, yeah, it's available. Shield, Sherrod, and Coleman. Jenny and Wright down low. Coleman still looking. Not finding. Kept alive. Wright, Riley rebounds. Good blocking out on the part of the Hoyas. Known for their... Rebounding prowess. They've done a good job at the defensive board in this game after the first six minutes. Blocking foul, Kareem Wright. It'll be his second. It was about a beat late getting there, trying to cut it off. Well, Rutgers coming quickly defensively on all dribble penetration. They want to cut off the penetration, force the outside shot. So far, they've been able to do that fairly well. But both big guys with two fouls, Gerald Riley, a excellent shooter. Very good from the free throw line where he shoots 90%. Remember in the old days, Georgetown couldn't make free oh. throws? This guy shoots 90% from the free throw line. Samnick just came in for Daryl Owens. Okay, one on one now. Hoy is on the season, third in the conference. 72.8% from the free throw line. And Riley knocks down the first. Riles having a pretty good year, tied for sixth in steal, second in free throw shooting. And he's 12 for 12 in conference play at the line. And he is a quiet kind of performer. Not demonstrative, just tries to get the job done. First miss in conference play, and got a foul. Team foul situation, eight on Rutgers and seven against the Hoyas. Little education in the classroom for Brandon Bowman right here. A freshman from Westchester in California. They won the state championship. Craig feels like he can be a two-man 6'8". He fits that Georgetown profile. Man, like you said, he is tall and long. Kareem Wright, back rim, rebound to Samnick. Kareem just the 43 percenter at the line. Bowman. No reset, get it out top two. The Hoya perimeter the shooters look a little bit hesitant yeah. on the perimeter right now. Beth will know. It's like a feeding frenzy on the boards. This is amazing. Look at this. Eddie Corbett said he got tied up before he was able to scream timeout. And we'll take a break here, 7.13 to go. Both teams go to their respective corners. It's 18-11, Hoyas.
Well, Ahoya fans have seen their club come back from a 10-6 deficit to enjoy its biggest lead of the night, a seven-point advantage right now, 18-11 at the 7-13 mark as we check other scores in top 25 action. Number eight, Connecticut down in Florida, where it's got to be a heck of a lot warmer than it is here. <laughs> Leading That's by a lot. Good thing coming up later, Texas Tech, Oklahoma in the Big 12. Yeah. And of course, Creighton up to number nine in the country. Connecticut needs to bounce back from their loss in Chapel Hill and all the former coach, John Thompson. A Hall of Famer, now a radio star here at WTEM. Working with Doc Walker. Rutgers really struggling at the offensive end, really getting nothing inside, and the three-point shooting has not been good for them. Wooten is a guy who can beat up. 24 in his last game against Villanova, as you mentioned. That's way too rich, right into the Rutgers radio area. How about that shot by Wooten, who's a great scorer in high school. He hit it dead. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then it came back. I thought it was going to have a hard rebound. He got a break. Detroit, a great basketball city. Perry Same. Watson at the University of Detroit doing a good job with that team. You had a chance to see them the other day. Not good from deep. Yeah. There's McCoy. Matter of fact, Wooten went to the same high school that Gary Waters went to. And Detroit shot clock at 12. Wooten checks it. Puts it on the floor. Runner on it. No goaltend. Wow. Wow. No goaltend. They let him play. On the way up. Boy. Watch how he uses his left hand. Wesley Wilson gets his left hand high. Welcome to the Big East, Calvin. Oh my goodness, it's a good call because the ball's on its way up. Terrific block, wow. Goes from the Elmore Smith School, send it to the 14th <laughs> row. <laughs> the problem, of course, for the yeah. touchdown is that <laughs> Rutgers maintains possession. That's right, that's why the Mr. R the Mr. Bill Russell School is a lot better. That's right. Keep it in play. But, but only eight seconds on the shot clock. I don't think they realize that either. Five, they go right and a hand here. Boy, they got bailed out there. Three on the shot clock, and defensively, that's a killer for Craig Eshrick and the Hoyas. That's a silly foul right there on the part of Wesley Wilson. Sends Kareem Wright to the free throw line, and that is Wesley's second foul. Uh, the post guys have two fouls in the first half. That's a sign of an aggressive game. Both teams with uh, 18 fouls. Kareem has struggled at the line. Played very well against Pittsburgh about 10 days ago. As we watch uh, Cortland Freeman come back, and he had Kareem at 13 points, yeah. going hard at uh, Ontario Lett and company. That's a tall, that's a muscular order. You got that right. Tori Morris and Siobhan Troutman also inside for Pittsburgh. And look at right now right that here. Chevy Troutman should get more pub, and that's a vicious dunk. You gotta love that. Oh, wait. Oh. Co captain Cortland Freeman attacked the rim. And an assist by Sweetney. Sherrod knocked away. Bethel started it. Now they got a breakout. Riley. Takes it hard. He got hit. They let him play. Sherrod, semi-cherry picking, goes up and lays it in. Georgetown handled that break situation very poorly. Four on two. They come up with nothing. Points in a paint story. Three to one margin. Boys, look out. Love the two rips there. The intent was good, though. Well, the thing is, intent is good, but their execution is not. They've had three fast break situations in a row. Three empty they tricks. had one spectacular dunk, Dave, and the other two were turnovers. There's six, uh, potential, what, nine points taken away, right? Yeah. Max out, three-point lead for the way. How about oh. this, another steal. Swing me ahead to Bethel. is at midcourt, and he's going to try to walk this one off because there's a tirade about to explode. Wow. There's a look at Gary. They he's got a myriad of things he wants to discuss here. This is great defense. Watch how Riley uses his inside hand, then fortuitously saves the basketball. Sweetney gives it up. This part's easy, but Riley's play on the defensive end, four straight fast break situations for the Hoyas, and that's the way they would like to play. Bethel exploding to the hoop on that one. Tony Bethel posters will be available tomorrow. <laughs> wow. He's a little guy. And he can get up. Georgetown, the advantage in the break. Montrose Christian for Washington, uh, Maryland. Sophomore guard, man, he's doing all right. Ten points a game. 
And now his high school teammate, Paul, in there trapping. And Hall, ooh, that was close. Hall looked like he knocked it off the Rutgers play. I like what Craig Eshrick has done with his defense in this game. He's played three or four different kinds of defense, now heavily into the trapping mode, and it's being successful. And we're allowed to go into the backcourt. 10 for 27. Wooten, boy, showing some guts. Taking it right in there. He's a scorer. They need him in this game badly. He's got four. Bethel back the other way. Tees up a three. Light it up. Well, a dunk on one possession, a three on the next possession. 25-19, Georgetown. Right now, if you're Rutgers, poise is a big thing right now. You got to get some defense, but you got to get some poise and execute and get some things here because it can get away. Root trying to get it back. No, rebound. Goes to Bethel with the assist from Freeman. Well, that was not a poised play, but Wooten in there for his scoring, getting a little bit of a green light. Three fouls on Kareem Wright. Sure enough, he tried to overplay against Mike Sweet, and he lost that battle. His third, ninth team. Rutgers caught between a rock and a hard place right now in terms of strategy, trying to be aggressive to get some open shots because they're struggling in the half court. Both post guys. In Amazon's foul trouble. Ramazana has two, comes back in with two. Kareem Wright with three. Agzani not in foul trouble. Those are the only three post players on the team. Sweetney wears teams out through the course of a game because of his power inside. Had a great year last year, 19 and 10. This year, 21 and 9. Shooting 54%. And he's had some monster games, Dave. Yeah. This year, 35 and 19 against West Virginia. Last year, 35 and 20 against Notre Dame. Oh, that was unbelievable. Tonight, pretty good yeah. game. And he had 23 and 25 minutes at Duke. Okay, Got in foul trouble. The third and fourth foul, that was at that game. Big factor in that game. Oh, my goodness. Big factor. A couple of bad calls. Take him off the floor. If he plays 35 minutes, he, he has 35 points easily oh, against Duke. And they only lost by seven at That's Cameron right. Indoor Stadium. After so. being up, what, 44-41 at the half, and should have been up by about eight had they made their shots. Wooten. It's funny how a week changes. Coming out of the Duke game, Georgetown feeling pretty good about playing the number one team, and then they come home and lose a game and, and kind of give the game away against St. John's. Couldn't handle St. John's pressure. Samnick. He's John Cockerty at making a good call there. Gave well, he gave him a warning. You're not allowed to cross the line with your hands. It's a technical foul. And he just told Sadnick that very thing. That one got a Wow, he's able to recover. Boy, McCoy, because the long arm's got a break. That's out of bounds. Shields trying to penetrate. We're trying to set up Wooten in the corner. Dave, that was a different kind of press. Remember before they were three-quarter court? That time they were 94 feet trapped in the first pass. So giving Georgetown, giving Rutgers a lot of different looks with their defenses. How thick do you think that defensive playbook is for Georgetown? I'll tell you what, it's plenty thick. And most of it says be aggressive on every page. Now back to 2-3 zone. Four minutes to go, first half. Kick it to Shields. He'll offer from there. Won't go. Rebound to Coleman. He missed that one. Coleman having a murderous night. Can't buy a shot. He's got one make tonight. Coleman, one out of six. We've got a timeout, 3.53 to go, and a 27-19 Hoya lead here at the MCI Center in downtown Washington, D.C. Hoya's up eight, their biggest advantage so far tonight, Bob Wenzel. 3.53 to go. Uh, teach us a couple things here. Well, this is attacking the press. Rutgers in a zone press. Watch how five Hoyas handle the ball. Very little dribbling, getting the ball to the right people. And this is how you attack a press. And get the ball to the right guy at the end. And the dunk, spectacular. I can remember guys my grandfather's age. Boys, when we played, the ball never touched the floor. <laughs> That's right. That's a good way to play. Zone defense to try to force the perimeter shot. Rutgers shooting 24% out for the game so far. Up top to Wooten with 10 on the shot clock. Shields has got it. Got a crack. Tried to leave it for Lamazana. Threw it away. Bowman saves it. Changing defenses have been very strategically appealing for Georgetown in this game. Done a very good job with switching it up. Causing a lot of misses by Rutgers at 2 for 12 from three-point range. Good call. Samnick shoved off, had a good full extension on Wooten. John Clockerty caught it. 
And a foul on Simmons. Well, you know, the funny thing is, when you have a tall guy and a short guy, the tall guy tries to go inside and take advantage of the little man. Right here, we can see it in the right-hand corner of your screen. And he pushes Wooten <laughs> off. <is>. Yep. <laughs> and you don't need to do that. Sometimes you can get out of your offense by trying to take advantage of a mismatch mm -hmm. like that. Shields tied up by Bowman. Oh, Bowman gets called for the foul. He thought he had some ball, but then he got body involved. That'll be his second. But well, he's moving his feet pretty well, and he's got long arms and trying to guard Shields, who's a characteristically good offensive player for Rutgers, but not a smart play. A learning curve situation. We'll talk about that in the film session. Shields, Mr. Consistency for Rutgers so far on the season, but tonight, one for seven from the outside, one for five from three-point range. That's his first free throw. Here's Sweetney and Wilson coming back in with Riley in that Hoya lineup. You know, Dave, you talked about how much Greg substitutes and how Georgetown characteristically does that. That is a way to build depth so that as the season wears on, when fatigue or fouls limit your starters, you have some confidence in the guys that you have in the game. Nice hustle by Shields to break that up. Sweetney had a tended receiver down there was Beth. Last year, Ricky Shields, look at the second line, 36%. Go down a few, 44% from three-point range this year, third in the Big East. So he has improved since his freshman season as a sophomore doing good things for Rutgers. Timeout called by Georgetown. You know, Dave, a lot of times... Hall did have something going there, so he got a T.O. A lot of times, Dave, you know, we talk all about the young freshmen that are in the league, you know, and in national basketball, but guys who have developed and go along like Shields and guys like Sweetney, they are really carrying their teams. Well, Mike had to like Sweetney from the moment you saw him step in the, in the court for Georgetown. Well, he is a big man. He uses the angles well, uses his body properly to get in the proper position. He also can run the floor, and he's got great hands, and that's why he is the first team post player in the Big East. First team all Big East preseason. Stays with things. Good stick to it in this on the offensive boards by Mike Sweetney. Pretty good game tonight. And rightfully so, the offense goes through him. Entry pass. Wilson couldn't haul it in. Rutgers with a chance to get a little closer here. Down six. Shields over the top. Try to cut it in half with one stroke. Didn't work. The reliance on the three-point shot in Rutgers has not been very beneficial to them in this game. Late average 23s a game. They gotta be in that neighborhood now easily, right? Yeah, they're taking 14 already in this game in the first half. Wilson walks it down the lane. No rebound Lamazana. Boy, he was so wide open, he couldn't believe he was that open. That's why he missed at that first shot. Wigan change of pace. Goes glass, short, no. Riley rebounds. Ahead to Bethel, running hard. Bethel ahead of the pack. Oh. He lays it up. Score! Tony Bethel running hard down that right lane has been very effective. 29 21 Hoyas. He's got nine. Bethel, a little guy, did a great job on the break there. In at the guard spot, Drew Hall, his high school teammate, playing the front of the 2 3 zone. Under a minute 50, long rebound again. Hoyas up by eight. Build their biggest lead with a score here. Here's Bethel for three. He's got the hot hand. It stays high. Tony Bethel's got 12. Double digits, 11 points now. The margin for the Hoyas. Shield steps in. He's in trouble. Delay. Boy, nice hang in the air by Ricky Shield. That gives him nine. That's team high for Rutgers. Bethel really doing a great job. Remember in the at, earlier in the game he had the dunk and then the three? I think what happens is he makes a layup. He gets himself juiced up, gets his legs into his three-pointer. In and out. Rebound Sweetney. Score. Bell. You know what? And I mentioned this yesterday, that great fake down low. He and Craig Smith put another name next to him. Jet the jet walk. Kill you on that low block. Watch this. Protect the basketball when you go inside. Keep the ball on your right, away from the big men so they can't block it. Keep your body between the ball and the defense, and Bethel did it very, very well. He used the top of the box, too, Bob. You don't see that see that often. Sweetney with 11 points, 9 rebounds, 5 in the, open, the offensive end. Using it high off the box. Yeah, and he had to see that. He had to because of Lamazana's length. Jenny McCoy and Sherrod in for the Rector Scarlet Knights. Scarlet Freeman returns for Georgetown. 
Lamazana playing with three fouls. Heavy duty foul trouble for the Scarlet Knights, both Wright and Lamazana. Now unusual lineup. Neither big man in the game, Axani and McCoy. Very unusual lineup for the Scarlet Knights. No power. Axani, a tough blue collar type guy, but no offense inside from either one of those two. Final 45 seconds. Rutgers had a 10 6 lead early. And then Georgetown had a 10 1 run. And he got the lead to 10 points now. Georgetown needs to pay attention to Wooten. He's on this side, open. Freeman with five on the shot clock. You know, Mike Sweetney does a great job. Watch him when he pump fakes here. Gets the defense off the floor, then he goes up, and as a result, he draws the foul. That is an educated post player. Yes, sir. And you drew the analogy between he and Craig Smith, the freshman at Boston College. I'm anxious to watch him a little bit more. Oh, you're gonna, I'm telling you, you're going to love him. He's leading, and he, and he can, he's leading the Big East in field goal percentage, right. 64%. Oh, it's incredible. Good numbers on the season for Coleman, but his percentage is not what they were last year. Another inadvertent horn. They play on. Rookie night at the horn. <laughs> 23 seconds ago. Bethel, what do we got? Turned it over. Nice defense by Wooten. Right now, Georgetown gets the ball to start the second half. What they should have done on that possession is try to maintain it, maybe score, and then score again to start the second half. Possible four-point swing. Instead, Rutgers gets the last opportunity. And by the way, Georgetown does not play BC regular season this year. Well, we won't see the big guys against each other then. <laughs> hey, we may not see them next year either. <laughs> Mike may be gone. Yeah, right, right. Final seven seconds. Coleman way outside. He's got one field goal. Does he get two? Yes, sir. Big one. Maybe that'll be just what Coleman needs to get going in the second half. They cut it down to five. Craig Eshrick's club leading 33-28 as we go to halftime. Hoy is by five. Rutgers needed a 7-1 run to close to within that number after being down by 11 here in Washington, D.C. Dave Sims and Bob Wenzel with you. The shooting not real good, but I tell you what, Rutgers pretty gutty to get back into this game. Well, they're aggressive, but they're not efficient. <laughs> the two guards, Shields and Coleman, are two for 12 from three-point range, and that is not going to get it done. On the other hand, Tony Bethel doing a great job for the Georgetown Hoyas. He averages only 10 points a game. He's got 12 at halftime already, Gabe. And he's done it several different ways. First of all, he's a little quick guy, and he takes the ball to the basket with authority. He does a good job of protecting the ball against guys coming down after him, and he has good leaping ability as well. Right here, you can see he gets protected. Lamazana, the second leading shot blocker, can't get to him, and he's made two threes as well. 12 points, two points above his average in the first half. Those highlights brought to you by Hyundai as we take a look at the first half statistics 25 to 10 in the paint Georgetown that's probably not much of a uh, surprise right there no Sweetney's doing most of that damage but the defense of Georgetown or the lack of offense 27 percent for the Scarlet Knights in the first half let's see how both clubs execute their adjustments when we come back Rutgers trailing at Georgetown by five Well, the Georgetown Hoyas have a five-point lead. They're one and two in the Big East Conference here in the early going in conference play. Rutgers still looking for its first conference win. They've lost to Pittsburgh, Notre Dame, and Villanova. And they were in danger of really getting blown out the last few minutes of that uh, first half, but that 7-1 run got them back in. How about Tony Bethel? We talked a lot about him in the last section. First 15 minutes, he shot one for three with two points. He finishes with a flurry. The last five minutes, four for four to finish with uh, with 10 points, a total of 12 for the half. And that partly was due to the fact that they were pressing a lot, and he was the recipient of a lot of easy plays. Easy layups yeah. and several threes. Bethel, two points above his average already in this game. Sweetney, Bethel. Bowman, Wilson, and Riley starting the second half for the Hoyas. Lamazana in for Rutgers with three fouls. There's Xani giving up a lot of weight and losing that battle to Sweetney. Sweetney with another bucket. That'll give him 14. Sweetney has a tendency to get opponents in foul trouble because of his massive size, but because also of his smart way of using his size. Bowman runner, no. Lamazana came, he caught a break. He came over and threw Riley. And 
it's going to be Georgetown ball. For a second, I thought a foul may have yeah. been called. That would have been really disastrous for the Scarlet Knights. 29 seconds in, it sure would have been. <laughs> Full court pressure on the part of Rutgers trying to create some tempo. They're not scoring in the five on five, that's for sure. So they're going to try to create turnovers and get some runouts. Two man game so far here for a nice steal by Sherrod. He's able to maintain, but it works. a two man steal, a two man game, Bethel and Sweetney's. They have the last 15 Hoya points. Well, that's inside and outside right there. Riley conspicuous in his absence in the scoring area. Usually a very reliable second scorer for Georgetown. Shields had nowhere to run. Riley back the other way. Ahead to Bethel. Bowman almost behind the basket. You know, from our angle here, it looked like that was one of those four shots. Well, as, long as, as long as he's not at the three-point line where he's 18% for the year, he needs to step in a little bit. That was nice rotation. Sweetly, does he knock it off? He does. Quick hands, great decision. You know, you talk a lot about Sweetney's offensive ability, but he's shown some stellar defense in this game and in this season. I think he's improved his defense this season. A lot of blocked shots, 37 on the year. Third steal tonight, he averages just under two. That's pretty good for a big guy. Rutgers misses Rashad Ken, who was a great steal guy for a big player also in the league. Bowman. Graduated last year. Bowman gets tight end. Last time I saw him, tight end with the Houston Texans. Lefty hook, old school for Mike Sweet. Get, get out of here. Zanny got a piece of it. Rutgers trying to rush the ball up quickly, make a couple of passes, and get some rhythm jump shots. Sherrod shot it short. Bethel. Looking ahead to Riley. Find Sweet. He run the floor. Timeout, Rutgers. Oh, they could see that one developing. Everybody was doing the right thing. Everybody was doing their roles. Gary Waters saying, what is going on here? 6-0 run to open up this half in a 39-28 Georgetown lead. Not quite two minutes in, second half. Georgetown's got it back to a double-digit lead at 11 points. And more Big East basketball coming your way Saturday. We'll see Mike Sweetney at Georgetown. We'll see them again as they take on Brandon Knight and the Pittsburgh Panthers. That's Georgetown versus Pittsburgh. Break two, number two this week, Saturday, January 25th, noon Eastern from ESPN+. Plus. Mike Sweetney and company dominating in the paint, a 29-10 edge. They've had a 6-0 run here to start the second half, and this match is their biggest lead. And they come with full court pressure, which worked very, very well for them in the first half. Created scoring opportunities. Amazana got it from Sherrod. Sherrod back to McCoy, surprised him. Amazana steps in, dropping in Sherrod. Quick release, and he scores. Well done. Rutgers now coming with full court pressure. Last time they did this, Sherrod made a nice steal. They had several traps in the backcourt. Sherrod with four points. You hear the Rutgers bench calling for a walk. They steal. Sherrod knocked it away. Four on three, Rutgers. Coleman wants it. Got it. That's a big three by Coleman. Gives him 10. First bucket here in the second half. The frenzy continues. 39-33. Rutgers again. Here's Coleman again. Not this time. McCoy kept it alive. Out of bounds. Georgetown. It's going to be Rutgers' ball. Three what straight turnovers frenzy. on the part of Georgetown. They are thinking about their last game when St. John's got all over them. Oh, my goodness. Miami beat Connecticut. They came from behind the final minute and 20 or something. Five points in the last eight seconds. Oh, that's a legendary <laughs> comeback. I'll tell you, they have good luck with Connecticut. When teams couldn't beat them at all, they did. Amazana went for the big time poster shot. Came up a little short, but it'll come up with a couple of free throws. Signs of life for the Scarlet Knights, mainly due to the full court pressure employed by that man. Four straight turnovers for Georgetown, and I mentioned the St. John's game. They were ahead 16 with seven minutes to go against St. John's and lost the game. Craig Eschert quoted in the Washington Post saying, we could not handle the pressure of St. John's defense. And so far, not getting off to a good start with Rutgers in the second half in that particular category. They had a few of their ball handlers foul out. They had some injuries. St. John's got all over in the last 7.23. And is on a missed rebound to Sweetman. We got McCoy at the front of this press. He is long arm. Here's an advantage Georgetown. Two and three block. Lamazana takes it down. Here's Irving. Ahead to Wiggins. Wiggins gets a layup. Timeout, Georgetown. Rutgers right back. They're down three. 
8-0 run. And after Georgetown came out and put a 6-0 run on them. So a nice counterattack by the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. This is great right here. The Bill Russell block the shot, keep it in play. Watch how he handles the ball, looks one way and passes the other. Beautiful, beautiful basketball on the part of the Scarlet Knights. And Hervé Lamazana with three fouls made that play. Last year, when Lamazana and company beat, Rutger, beat Georgetown in the rack, as loud a building as I'd ever heard, 89-87 in overtime, part of their many great wins in the conference. They went 15 and two at the rack last year, and it was incredible. I'll tell you, it gets loud in there. And Hervé Lamazana, if he continues to play like that, it'll be louder when they go back and play at home. But right now, unafraid to go after the block with three fouls, pressure hurting Georgetown big time. This is where they miss Kevin Braswell. They miss Ashanti Cook, who's on the bench with an injury, who's a point guard. Rod riding a little bit too hard there. So it's just the first foul on Mike Sherrod. Team foul number one for Rutgers. That matches Georgetown. Here's Bethel going against Sherrod. They just brought in Darrell Owens. Back to Freeman down low. Sweetney at position. And Lamazana had his back to the offensive player. He was boxing out Sweetney. Next thing you know, Sweetney had the ball. That's a foul on Lamazana. Sure is, number four. That's his fourth that comes at the 1636 mark. Right here, he's just backing into him and calls that foul. Freeman put up the shot. There's another foul. Well, that is bad news for Rutgers right now. Turning point in the game, Dave. Four fouls on Lamazana. He's leaving very early. And in let me the say something. Half. You know, in that little flurry, he could have got another foul. So Gary Waters is saying, hey, didn't a horn blow? I wanted to get my guy in. <laughs> get him out as soon as possible. He can't do it now. He's got to wait for the free throw. Lamazana will have to play if this is a miss. Lamazana one for three, three points in the first half. There's a miss by Cortland Freeman. Freeman on the season at 65%. And now Lamazana's going to leave. He said, hey. But he was leaning back into him as a unusual position he found himself in. Well, he lost sight of the basketball, and he was blocking out. He thought a shot was going up, and a pass came instead. Brentland Freeman with the free throw. Freeman and Sam, that give them big guys off the bench that can press and run. How about this at the point of the, uh, point of the press, too? McCoy keeps it going. Sweetie got his hands on it. Back to Wigan. McCoy steps back. That's a three. That will go. Green right goes up strong. Almost tore the house down. <laughs> Rutgers wants the basket good, but they're not going to get that call. Kareem Wright, the most physical of the Knights, close to the basket. Right here on the break, a little mishandle by McCoy. And Sweet Bob Lane, hands. which has been characteristic of this game. But at the end of this, Wright comes up big on the board. Kareem, it's a 40-37. Really McCoy's sixth three-point shot. Bethel leaves. Favor Riley, who's back. Three points, six boards for Kareem Wright. Captain of this rugby ball club. Hard rattle and rebound taken down by Owens. Last court, Drew Hall. Hall, Freeman, Sweetney, Owens, and Riley. Riley baseline. Oh, great pass! Mike Sweetney scores it. He's got 18. 42 37. Well, they know who the main man is, and they give him the ball. When he moves to the best. Well, as they should. I mean, he is the person that is the most reliable guy in the league inside oh. scoring. Coleman deep curl. McCoy kept it alive. McCoy down low, and that'll score it if it goes. It didn't. Very impressive going to the offensive board is the freshman from Houston, Jason McCoy, really getting after it on the offensive board in the absence of Lamazana. Maybe Rutgers is finding another post player. Freeman just picked up his fourth. about eight minutes a game. And he's going to play more minutes tonight out of necessity. A senior year in high school, he averaged 4.1 block shots per game. My goodness. He is long. And the value of having a lot of post players is that Rutgers is in trouble without Lamazana. Not so for Georgetown and Freeman. 
Wooten's in for Rutgers, and that free throw is good. Timeout, 1542 to go. And regulation. How about Rutgers? They've closed to two here in Washington, even though Sweetney's having another big game. 42-38 lead for the Hoyas of Georgetown. Home standing Hoyas. Hey, let's get back in the time machine. Who's that guy in the front row? Oh, I'm telling you, what a powerful two guard that guy was, huh? Oh, my goodness. How far did you guys go in the NIT that year? Lost in the first round to Tennessee. Who was on the Tennessee club? What do you remember? Uh, Croft was a 6'11 player. Okay, and what was the best part about your game? I was a scorer. I averaged 16 a game. and uh, You let it rip, huh? Oh, yeah. I never took the ball out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Rutgers cashing in on another turnover. Coleman stutter step, went behind his back and lost it. Three on one. Owens takes it all away and lays it in. They are better in transition. There's no question about that. Rutgers needs to handle the ball well. Rutgers also better in transition out of their press in this game. Both teams struggling in the half court set. Both much far superior when the court is open. Coleman, Wigan, Wooten, Wright, and McCoy on the floor for the Scarlet Knights. McCoy goes in blocked by Samnick. Let's take a look at our BMW ultimate drive of the game. Well, I'll tell you what, when one goes from one end to the other on the break, that's doing a lot of good stuff. Darrell Owens, our BMW drive of the game. I mean, Coleman couldn't get it in bounds, so he calls a timeout. So it stops the clock at 15.06 to go. Here in regulation. Well, right. both of these teams, Dave, are really in a struggle mode right now, and we can see that. They're very, very determined after two disappointing losses, but not efficient with the offensive part, but very aggressive defensively. Here's what Rutgers has on its immediate schedule. Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday at West Virginia. Then Carmelo Syracuse. Anthony in the Cuse. He gets, it's scary to say, he gets better every time you look at him. I'll tell you what, he's a great passer, isn't he? And Seton Hall has won two straight games. Seton Hall's doing some nice things. Will Yor has the Pirates at two and three. Rutgers coming in tonight, trying to end a four-game losing streak. Well, the, the LaSalle, thing is about, Pitt, Notre Dame, and Nova. Yeah, and, and, and you know, Pitt and Notre Dame, Pitt was at home against the number three team, and at Notre Dame, the number nine team. So that's nothing really to scoff about, but the big loss to Villanova is what's hanging in their core right now. 110-89 in that game. And some trouble with one shot, no recognition there. The shot got off in time in regulation. Here's Samnick back the other way. Drew Hall, characteristically a point guard, not an accurate three-point shooter, runs the show, tries to dish. They can roll with Sweetney. Look out, deflection, out of bounds on Rutgers. 21 on the shot clock. Drew L. Wigan, really a very, very good defensive player. He's doing a job on Riley. He's going to stay close on him. Nice challenge with the shot. In and out. Wooten had it, regains. Tenacious freshman got hit in the face, trying to walk it off. Wigan against Riley. They want Kareem Wright, and they got a kick. New clock for Rutgers. 14-23 to go in the game five. Sweetney is playing behind Wright. He pushes him off the block, so Wright catches it where he can't do much with it. Nice defense on the part of the first team all Big East player. Bethel back in. See Drew Hall getting a rest as does Sweetney with Wesley Wilson returning. Well, Wilson is a defensive presence inside. A good shot blocker at 6'11". He's also long and has good leaping ability. You got a Kareem right. Out top to Wigan. Down the lane, off the glass. That runner off the glass has been effective for Joel Wigan. 44-40. Big East basketball. Hotly contested tonight. Rutgers and Georgetown. First meeting of two. Dave Sims and Bob Wenzel with you. This three stories, pretty ugly for a Rutgers. Look at that. They checked it up 20 times, make it 21. Bingo! Uh, Coleman. <laughs> Keep shooting at Coleman, this guy who can get on fire. And how about the hustle by McCoy into his own bench? Three Trying to make shooting. a save. Three-point shooting not a part of the Georgetown arsenal. They do, do not shoot well from there, or they don't try to shoot frequently from there. Bethel and Riley, the only ones. Coleman, a guy who is not having a great year this year, but certainly ability to shoot from deep. I think that balanced up on that one. Let her rip. He did. And he loves to shoot from out there. He's taken more threes than anybody in the league except Matt Carroll. 
That's having a better year percentage wise. Yeah, but he can get on fire at any mm -hmm. point. Oh, Coleman can absolutely. I've seen games last year, particularly at the rack. 20 on the shot clock. Nice Sweeping wheels. In close, no. Got it back. Inside, score the goal. Boy, does he stay on it. You never see a guy so much that gets his shot blocked and stays with it as you do with Mike Sweetney. He has more double doubles, 27 of them, now 28, than any active player in the Big East Conference. Right here, wisely getting the ball into Sweetney is Hall. Good numbers for Sweetney, 20 and 11, six offensive boards. They double team him and he still stays on it. Semnick put a heck of a box out on Curry <laughs> right. Wiggins came up with it. Three points, the deficit for Rutgers. It trailed by as many as 11. Here's Coleman, foul line jump, no good. Rebound, Coleman went to get it. Coleman in traffic. Coleman had partially blocked. Big Sammy tips, and Rutgers is down by one. Rutgers hanging around and hanging around. Presses effective. There's the steal again. Here's Wiggins going up. Rutgers leads. 47-46 timeout, Georgetown. What a comeback by the Scarlet Knights. Reminiscent of St. John's being behind against Georgetown and beating them with the press. Long arms create steals. And taking advantage of it is Joel Wigan. Terrific full court pressure, a trap in the corner. No place to go. Wiggins knows what his assignment is. That's how you press. Ferocious attack by Rutgers, a 19-7 run over a five-minute span. Very impressive. Very impressive and largely due to full court pressure defense. They guard the ball in bounds. Once the ball is brought in bounds, they try to get a quick double team. And when the double team is a good one, they jump in the passing lanes. And that's how Jewel Wigan gets his steals. 19-7 run over five minutes. Maybe one of the best stretches they've had all season. Really? And you're going to see it again right on this particular if it, play. If it works. Beat it to death till they stop. Six turnovers, six minutes for Georgetown. Well, not only did they press that time, they got a double team in the backcourt and the front court. Sweetney down low. Challenge ball got knocked away. Xani, I believe, will be called for the foul. It is Sean. As Brandon Bowman, a freshman, welcome to the Big East. He takes a lick here. <laughs> he does, but this is nice ball movement. Sweetney unselfishly gets it to Bowman, and that is a good foul because you want to send a guy to the free throw line instead of giving him a dunk. So nice recovery on the part of Rutgers from their press back into their half court stuff. Bowman, 74%. Good front court play. Average 14 and 8, leading Westchester to a 32 and 2 record. As Zixani will get a rest. And back in is Mike Sherrod. Bowman playing about 19 minutes of ball game. And he's a full-time starter for them. Plays off of Sweetney. Coleman in trouble. And he just moved his pivot for the skosh. <laughs> a what? A skosh. Just want to take it up a skosh in your pants. You know, just a little bit, maybe a little less than an inch. Oh, I got you. I wasn't sure exactly what that was. A skosh. I got to remember that one, Dave. You know, you take his pants in, about a skosh here. Good ball movement. Good scramble defense. Oh! You get the reaction. <laughs> The Rutgers, they thought they had, they had a block. That's right support. Well, Sweetney was able to back right under the basket, and he uses this because he uses his body well. They reverse the basketball. Everybody's looking. Look at right. His head is underneath the net. There's no way you can defend somebody when you get pushed that far under. Not too many guys beat him to the spot. No. Nope. And, and because they reverse the ball from one side to the other, if you front him on one side, it's impossible to front him on the other side with quick ball movement. Yep. So both post players with four fouls for Rutgers. Graham Wright with four, Lamazana with four. There are four guards in the game day for Rutgers and Agzani. Now that should be helpful to Rutgers at the offensive end. Might be some tough matchups for the Hoyas, but the Hoyas should go to the offensive board strong. Agzani gets it down low, they double him. Back outside Coleman, 20 on the shot clock. Give it to Agzani again. Wiggins, 
Good quickness, saves it. Plenty of time, he's got 14. He steps inside, how to get it off? Bethel rebounds. Hoyas run, here's Hall. Now if the Hoyas were smart, they would try to take advantage of their inside play right here with Sweetie or Bowman. And that's where they go. Bowman put it on the floor, he got in trouble, and they take it away. Exani leads to Wooten. Wooten ahead of the pack. Wooten lays it up, and he scores. Great hands by Rutgers in the triple team in the post on Bowman. Rutgers back on top, 49-48. So ball club that was down 32-21 late in the first half. Ball turns a corner and they get Sherrod for the foul. Extremely unusual lineup for Gary Waters right now. Four guards in Axani in the game. The reason he's got that is because his two post players are on the bench with four fouls. Exani only 6'7", about 225. The two post guys, particularly Lamazano, who's more of a scorer, at what point would uh, Gary try to bring him back in? Well, I'll tell you what, you got, you know, with almost over 11 minutes, it's tough. Normally you would bring a guy back with maybe six minutes to go, but what he's probably got to do is alternate them, put one in for a while, take him out, and then put the other one in for a while. But so far, the four guard situation is going pretty well for them. Look at Sherrod, number three, underneath the basket is the rebounder. And Drew Hall with a couple of free throws. Puts Georgetown back on top. Back and forth we go. Exani with a fine defensive play as Rutgers hanging tough here on the road. Only a basketball to play. Back and forth we go. Georgetown by one. Three ties, eight lead changes so far. And let's take a look at shooting the rock. Brought to you by Rolling Rock. Grab a rock. Dramatic difference for Rutgers in the first and second halves. Georgetown doing a little bit better in the second half than they did in the first, but they're turning the ball over. And Rutgers taking advantage of that. Tony Bethel, 12 points in the first half, Dave, and has taken one shot since then and has not made it. Zero points in the second half for Bethel. Rutgers down 32-21 at one point. Falls at halftime at 33-28. And they turn it over. The matchup here, Brandon Bowman must guard Jewel Wiggins. So a 6'8 on a 6'3. The rest of the perimeter guys, Hall, Bethel, and Riley, can guard against offensive guards. Sweetney has an advantage inside with Axani, although Axani, pretty rough customer himself. Mm -hmm. Down low, Sweetney. Sweetney draws the crowd. Back rim, rebound. Off the bounce comes to Axani. Rutgers really doing a good job. Whenever Sweetney puts the ball on the ground, they are there with quick hands throwing his rhythm off. Rutgers looking to regain the lead again. Axani inside. Oh, he traveled, blocked. Bethel comes up with it, the block by Sweetney, who retreats down court quickly. He Here's runs Riley. The they find Sweetney. Take it away by Axani. Nice play. They tie him up. It's Rutgers ball. Axani doing a great job defensively on the best post player in the Big East. Blue collar work getting it done. Sweetney did a great job of running down. Watch Axani. He uses his lower body to force Sweetney under the basket and does not foul him. Terrific, terrific job by Sean Axani. A junior, 6'8", 235. Wooten, a freshman, getting a lot of time of late. Played well, running the late, partially blocked. Second chance is good! <laughs> Goodness gracious, how about that? 51-50 Rutgers. He's got eight. Maybe Gary Waters has found something with the four guards in at the same time. That's the turn the corner. Got it off, no. Bowman, blocked by Xanny. Xanny takes over. Stolen by Riley. Riley lays it up before he's short on it. Sweetly lays it up and in. What a sequence that was. 52-51, Georgetown. This is aggressive wanting it by both teams. Exani, not known for his shot blocking, clears the rebound. With the rebounds in the middle of the floor, Riley blows it. Everybody's going after the ball. Terrific aggressiveness by both groups. Foul is Exani's fourth. So for Rutgers, you've got Lamazana, Exani, and Wright. They're big people with four fouls. Well, what Gary Waters is going to have to do now is just rotate each of them until they foul out. Another double-double for Mike Sweetney. His 28th. That one won't go. Rebound goes to Sherrod. Mike getting up there to get a board. Average is four again. Sherrod, give and go with Xani after the fumble. Got knocked away by Bethel. Fine play. Bethel in a hurry. Back the other way. Here's Riley. Riley goes up. He didn't short it that time. Lays it in. Short 
Georgetown, 54-51. Holman trying to get back in the game for Rutgers at the next stop. Look how spread Rutgers is. Nobody in the paint at all. Five guys on the perimeter to try to take advantage of quickness. Wigan too strong. Rebound Riley. Riley doing some good work. Here's Owens in a hurry. Great catch by Sweetie Smart. That pass is behind him. Timeout Rutgers. What a catch by the All-American candidate Mike Sweetney. A 601 by Georgetown to get a lead back to 56-51. They're up by five. And Georgetown does it by slapping the ball away at the defensive end and filling the lanes in the break. Soft hands on the part of the big man. That's what you want from somebody. A heads up play. Four Hoyas touch the ball. Sweetney gets the layup at the other end. Nice teamwork on the part of the Hoyas. So under control. 25 he points, 12 boards, 7 0 boards. Wow. That is so impressive. All American candidate, and he's got to do a lot this year. He's got to score a lot of points for them to win. Saturday in Pittsburgh, he's going to be going up against Ontario Lett, Tory Morris, and Chevy Troutman, who are all very, very physical players. Seton Hall and Notre Dame to follow for the Hoyas. Bob and I will be doing that Pittsburgh Georgetown game. That game will be televised in your area. Check your local listings. Have That's you been to the Peterson be Event Center yet? I've heard nothing but graves about fabulous. it. I haven't fabulous. seen it yet. Fabulous, fabulous place. They are sold out for the year. Yeah. 13,000. During football season, we kept hearing about that. Well, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. There's not a seat available. Yeah. It's a huh. great place. See, Rutgers has another response. Georgetown opened the first, the early going here in the second half of the little run. Rutgers got right back in it. Still a lot of basketball to go. Down five, nine minutes to go. I tell you what, these guys have been playing hard all night long. Wooten gets Bethel. Blocking charge. Foul on Tony Bethel. Nice stop and go movement on the part of Wooten. Axani going out. He would get a standing ovation if this game was off the rack. Watch the up and under. Stop and go. Gets Bethel off balance. Little touch foul. Tony's first foul, eighth. Check that fourth team foul. Rutgers has 18 foul. Coleman back in. They post up. Back to Coleman. He got his feet set. He fires. Won't go. Coleman almost tipped it in the basket. Tipped it to himself. Nice rebound on the part of the freshman. Boy, he's a young looking guy, isn't he? Very impressive. Two man game. Sweetly's open. Riley. And Riley lost. Boy, they had an opportunity to get something going. They had the ball down deep and can't get nothing on that trip. They really did. Shields in the game. Zero points so far in the second half for Rutgers' second leading scorer. Inbounding the basketball now. Shields, Wooten, Sherrod, Coleman, and Kareem Wright is back in for Rutgers. So they still have the four guards in the game, and now they're rotating post people. Axani on the bench, and Wright in. There's Coleman. Guarded by Riley. He'll have a tough time. He's going to need a pick to get a shot off against Riles. Left it back. Luckily, Wooten was there. Pull up from there. In and out. Green right. Rebound. Goes up through Sweetney. And he'll shoot a couple of free throws. Well, Rutgers is spreading the court out and leaving one post player in and around the basket, which is right. And it's been fairly effective so far, although Georgetown has had some runouts on them. And that accounts for the five point deficit. Kareem Wright, physical inside guy. Struggling the adventure. At the line. How about that? an adventure up there. And folks, to get information on your favorite Big East team, go online at www.bigeast.org for all the basketball and conference news from around the Big East. That foul on Sweetney was just his second. Kareem Wright, three for six at the line this evening. Nice and soft on that one. Makes it 56-52. We approach eight minutes to go. Sherrod, a tena tenacious defensive player. Bethel teasing Sherrod. <laughs> Showing him the ball, taking it away. Ooh, Wilson may got away with one. Bethel, pull up. Tough shot. Oh, man. Shades of Kevin Braswell on that kind of shot. 14 for Bethel. 740 in counting. Six point Hoya lead. Wright's got to be careful as he posts up against Wilson. They 
find Coleman. Got a step inside, lays it in. Coleman displaying some variety in his game, not used to just shooting threes, taking the ball to the basket as well. He's got 15 in a four-point game. I'll tell you what, Hall and Bethel having a little trouble against the Rutgers guards, bringing it up one-on-one. -on -one. Right now it's 7.22 to go. Tony Bethel in the Hoyas. Heck of a shot right here by Tony. Hoyas lead by four, but a long way to go. Welcome back, everybody, to the beautiful MCI Center Big East basketball. We've got a good one here. Rutgers and Georgetown going at it, and they're going hard, too. It's 58-54. Got a lot of uh, folks from the government in attendance, and that's next to the lady drinking a bottle of water is Christy Todd Whitman, former governor of New Jersey. Matter of fact, while you were coaching at Rutgers, Absolutely. Right? Came down a lot. She was one of my biggest fans, and her daughter, Kate, sitting next to her. She's the head of the EPA. If I say SEC, do you think Southeastern <laughs> Conference or <laughs> Security Exchange Commission? <laughs> Which one? Well, being I'm in the, re the realm of business I'm in, uh, <laughs> I would have to think about Jim Herrick and the Georgia Bulldogs. <laughs> there you go. They go inside to Sweeney to double team it. Nice hands. Good double team right there. It's down the open end. Great pass. Hall. Jump shot's good. That's what you have to do against yeah. double teams. Amazana is back in for Rutgers. Get the ball out of the double team, reverse it, get a wide open jumper. Daryl Long play play by the Hoyas. Owens has four. Wiggins sets up Irving Lamazana. Oh man, got too much air on that one. He's been on the bench too long. Yeah. It's one, it, he had nothing but the basket in front of him. <laughs> he had a 12 footer, he shot at yeah, 16 right. feet. Hall got inside. True Hall take the, takes it all the way home. Is that a Silver Spring, Maryland? He's got four. Lamazana did not want to foul, and as Absolutely. a result, yeah. an easy basket. Or is that the lead up to eight? Lead is changed hands back and forth here in the second half. Coleman. He wants a shot. Too much. Wiggins, jump stop. Got it. Off. Rebound by Owens. Oh, it's going to lead a break. Oh, he had Bethel ahead of the pack. Dangerous thing to do to run out like that with the dribble in the middle of the floor. Owens, a shaky ball handler. Very. And Coleman bails him out big time. You should never rebound the ball and dribble down the middle when your guy is not a great ball handler. Magic Johnson did it. Other big guys can do it. But that's where all the traffic is, Dave. Sure. So people are going to come behind and tap the basketball. Owens fortunate to getting a trip to the line. Third foul, second foul on Coleman. Sends Owens to the line. Sophomore? Yeah, had to sit out last year. Back rim, Shields with the rebound. Ahead to Wu. They stop him, Lamazana. Beyond the three. Coleman fired. In and out. I'll tell you what, he's had some tough misses tonight. He really has. He's been right around the rim, too. You know, a guy like him can get hot like he did earlier and made a couple of threes in a row, but has not been consistent with it. Drew Hall down the lane off of Bethel. Boy, Bethel had let it go. It was out on Coleman. And there's a break for Rutgers. That was a good play by Coleman. Instead of coming in to try to stop penetration, he stayed with his own man, cut off the passing lane. Rutgers not shy. 24 hoists from beyond the arc. Not the shy, average not 20 good. tonight. Yeah. They're three over their average. Hoy is trying to pound it inside. Wigan back outside. Here's Coleman. Coleman got hit. He'll shoot three. 508 to go in an eight-point ball game. Occasionally you see people foul the three-point shooter and it's a cardinal sin mm -hmm. to not foul the jump shooter, but occasionally you can't help yourself, especially if you're defending somebody who's got a big rep for three-point shooting. Well, I saw a number yesterday at BC, and it happened again yesterday. Uh, Troy Bell, yes. in his career, 49 times he's been fouled shooting a three, and yesterday made it 26 times he's converted all three. Pretty amazing stat. And of course, he's a danger to shoot from three, so people try to play him sharply and challenge the shot. Shield sits, Bowman sits with their respective clubs. McCoy back in, along with Riley. Bowman, free 
throw. 75% on the season, 62-57, coming up on five minutes to go. The Hoyas have been shaky against this press. They get it down, they got numbers. Oh, there's a, oh, I thought he had a... Thought for sure that was going to be a block, but he got hand to Coleman, his third foul. When you that could have been an emotional play right there for Rudd. No question. And when you press full court, the second thing you have to do besides trap is recover. Because right now, the red shirt's coming down in recovery mode. Coleman got him on the wrist, but got back quickly. I love the way Bethel sees the floor. Vision on the part of the point guard. His head is up. He avoids the charge. Got Clearly him on the wrist. a foul. Yep. Got him on the wrist. 26 points for Mike Sweetman. Same thing we always say about Marcus Hatton. Where would Georgetown be without Mike Sweetman? Yeah. They don't want to know. No question. He is a hard guy to guard. The whole points. team has to guard him. No one guy can play him. Seven point margin. Double screen. Coleman over the top. Wait. Didn't get, get a good stroke on that one. Here's Bethel again. Start playing some clock on the kick by Coleman. 441. You ever hear that historical term when living by the sword, those who live by the sword die by the sword? Yeah. Same thing applies to the three. <laughs> yeah. Those who live by the three can die by the three. Yeah. Shoot, some of these guys can shoot you in about <laughs> two seconds. Bethel as they kill some clock coming up on four and a half. Got inside. High off the glass. Beautifully done by Tony Bethel. He's got 16, just four here in the second half. Very nice play by Bethel. Kept under control, did not try to penetrate all the way. Used the board. Ooh, with a step, Ooh, all the way in. Leaves it for Lamazana. Might have been better just shooting that. Lamazana, a couple of bounces. Sweet knee rebounds. That's a costly miss. He's got 13 boards. Wooten had an opportunity there. Little baby too unselfish. Yeah, Works down in control right now with four minutes to go. 409, down nine, Sweetney. And what do we got? A foul? But Sweetney got hit up in the face. Sure did. Georgetown is handling the fact that they are ahead a little bit better than they did against St. John's in their last game. So they're taking a step forward right here. Craig Eschrick very upset about the way they ended that game and that loss, 77 72 to St. John's. Doing a little bit better tonight in a similar circumstance. The over under on the amount of sleep Craig got after that game. Not much. Not much, I'll tell you. Here comes Mike Sherrod for Wooten. Kareem Wright is coming back for Rutgers. Well, at this point in the game with 3.52 to go, I think Gary Waters feels that he can't be concerned about guys fouling out. You just got to go ahead and play it. You can see, Sweetney, most double doubles of any active player in the Big East Conference. Wigan in a hurry back the other way. Man to man defense has been more effective than the zone in this game, Dave, for the Georgetown Hoyas. Holman turns a corner, gets it up. No, kept alive. Bowman's got it. Pocket coming up on 3.30, blocking foul, what do we got? Technical foul, I believe, Jim Burke called on Gary Waters. So Gary Waters picks up the technical with 3.33 to go, sends Gerald Riley to the line. Technicals now in the last several years, the point where the technical was was called, you continue play from that point. In the past, the team offended would get the ball automatically. Riley with a couple of free throws. Maybe that is the beginning of the end for Rutgers as Sweetney and Ahoy is starting to pull away 68-57. The reflecting pool as we look at the Washington Monument, one of the great vistas here in a beautiful city, Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, 68-57. Last 6-57, Georgetown on an 18-6 run to match its biggest lead. Rutgers with one field goal in that time. Zone defense on the part of the Scarlet Knights trying to force the outside, but Georgetown attacks it well. 
attack down there is going to get wiped out. A traveling violation on the Hoyas. Turnover number 18 for the Hoyas, 15 for Rutgers. Glad you could join us for Big East basketball. I'm Dave Sims with Bob Wenzel. Spirited contest. Georgetown pulling away, though. Almost seven minutes worth here. Rutgers had made their run by full court pressure. Five turnovers in a row by the Hoyas. Gave Rutgers a one-point lead, but since that time, Toyas, the Hoyas toughened up defensively and a lot of, got a lot of fast breaks and got Sweetney more involved. Under three to play. Rutgers needs shots. Great defensive sequence here by Georgetown. Shields over the top back rim. Rebound to the freshman. Uh, Owens, the sophomore, beg your pardon, and he was way out of control. What happened here? What do we got? Jan Clarkney with the call. He had it. It's going to be right out of bounds. Dribbling it out of bounds. He's got a 68-57 lead under 245 to play. What's the hurry? That's right. This is not a good play. Owens has been a shaky ball handler throughout the game, trying to do a little too much. That last time down for Rutgers was Shields' first shot of the half. Coleman, deep, deep three. No, rebound. Kept alive. And here's Bethel. Bethel, they don't need a score. He takes it in anyway and does score. 70 to 57 as we approach two minutes to go. 18 for Tony Bethel. Outstanding tonight. Eight above his average. Rutgers doing nothing at the offensive end in the last five minutes. Long, long drought, five minutes for Rutgers. Well, they were saddled with foul trouble. Both post players had four fouls for Gary Waters' team. Sean Agzani was in the game with four guards at the same time, and that's a physical wearing down, and I think that's what's accounted for this situation that we're seeing right now. All misses now costly, and Shields back rims one. Agzani did an admirable job by himself in there on the post. Kareem Wright and Lamazana have had to alternate being in and out of the game. Foul trouble up front for the Scarlet Knights and doomed them. Oh, he missed them both. They get more shooters and more quickness in with Luton and Lamazana. 157 to go in a 13-point Hoya lead. Bethel beating pressure again. Sweetening, and it knocked away. Tie up. And it'll stay right here. 148 left on the clock. Another action, Miami, with an unbelievable last eight seconds to come out of nowhere Scored to make five in the last eight seconds, right? Oklahoma over Texas Tech. That's at the half. And 95-82, great. I love how this price of Oklahoma. What a great guard he is. Riley with six on the shot clock. Bethel kept it alive for Wooten. 125, time running short on Rutgers. He'll fire a deep three, won't go. Mamazana rebounds, and he got it. 118 to go. One timeout left for Rutgers, two for Georgetown. Boy is not looking to stop clock at all as Bethel takes it back. Rutgers in this game, Dave, five for 28 from three point range. Ooh. Georgetown doing the wise thing right here. Holding the ball out, 11-point lead with under a minute to go. 5-28. On made field goals in the last minute of the game, the clock stops automatically. So lots of times when you see teams call timeout late in the game, they don't really need to call a timeout to stop the clock. Nice Riley at the line. That man trying to figure out his team. After 18 and 13 NIT season last year, struggling a little bit early in the Big East season. So that 18% for Rutgers matches its low of the season. They went four for 22 against Virginia. Actually, it's the next low. The low is 16%, two for 12 against Delaware State. Lamazana, they'll let him score, and they do. Four scrambling, and they, they get a foul call. It's going to be on Ricky Shields. Georgetown has had more success inbounding the ball to the middle of the floor against right. the press. Right here, a nice head and shoulders fake. Wooten has some moves. And a nice pass here. No one wants to foul Lamazana on Georgetown's Absolutely team. Absolutely not. 
Lamazana has to learn to stay out of foul trouble somehow. In their last game against Villanova had two fouls in the first minute of the game. Saddled with foul trouble throughout in this game. Takes away from a guy's rhythm, especially a good offensive player like Lamazana. There's your you're in and you're out. Right. to maintain your offensive flow. He's a 10 and 6 guy who can shoot threes. Yeah. And he's quick around the basket as well. So Darrell Owens with a couple of free throws. 74-61. Misleading score when it's finally over. Quick shot there by Wooden goes for three. You see when they get into the middle of the floor, they're better off. Sweetney leads to turn though and face up the floor when he catches it. Bethel fouled by McCoy with 30 seconds exactly left in a 10-point game. Well, both of these teams came off disappointing losses, and Georgetown, Craig Escherich's team, has bounced back. They get to play at home instead of on the road, so that's a good situation to bounce back from. They can erase the memory of their loss to St. John's late in that game when they mishandled the basketball and didn't handle the press very well. Rutgers, on the other hand, has to continue to stay on the drawing board, struggling with no wins in the Big East so far. Final 25 seconds. Sean, I tell you what, Wooten earn, has earned this game and in the Villanova game, earning a lot more playing time coming up. 24 against Villanova. Yeah. Good offensive player. And they'll let him run it out. Georgetown Hoy has improved to 10 and 4, 2 and 2 in the Big East. Rutgers drops to 8 and 8, 0 and 4 in the Big East. Final score from AMCI Center, 76 66. Georgetown for Bob Wendell and our entire ESPN Plus crew. I'm Dave Sims. Mike Sweetney, 27 points. Tony Bethel with 20. Rutgers at West Virginia is the next time they tee it up. That'll be on Sunday in Georgetown and Pittsburgh. We'll see you then, Saturday noontime. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports television. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a great night.